one and welcome back to another patch notes review what should be the final patch of preseason as i've been kind of saying for the other patches because i thought they were the final ones but no this for all intents and purposes should be the final one <clears throat> now let's get into it it's the final sort of I'm really going to be pissed if they make me prove myself wrong again. Sort of patch this preseason. That means a lot of tweaks based on first rounds of data. The game always changes a decent amount. Oh yeah, sure, 5 AD. Uh, this time of year, so we're looking to make sure that heading into the next season, which is in about... This is December, right? It's like a month and a half. Uh, no, no, no. Like, Yeah, yeah, a month and a half. Because it's coming near the end of January, I think. It's a little bit over a month and a half. Anyway. Uh, a number of champions love the new runes and have been smashing competitions, that is correct. There's some characters in the meantime that can use none of them, so hopefully they get to those. Oh wait, yeah, they say it. While others find themselves without a keystone. Some of the runes themselves are either too strong or on the weak side. Airy! <coughs> anyway, we want to make sure that we don't head into winter break with huge outliers, so we'll be doing another minor patch before then. Okay, so patch 7.25 is on its way. Thank you, Riot. Making me seem like a buffoon again all right so patch highlights we don't need to see that because that's what you're watching the video for hopefully champions aurelion soul so i really think aurelion is in a weird spot i don't know if he uses phase rush because i've played aurelion like a couple times this uh this patch or this preseason and he felt all right but I don't know if that's because I was a good player because who I was versing was trash. But they are correct in that, like, there's not, like, a really good rune for him. So they're buffing his, uh, his ult cooldown. And wait a minute, what's this? Buff to phase rush. Let me, let me click on this real quick. Okay, wait, it's in the patch notes. Never mind. So we'll get to it eventually. We'll, we'll get to it eventually. Actually, wait, what the fuck happened? It turned everything white on my screen. Oh, what the fuck is going on? Let me reload this. This looks weird as fuck. Okay, yeah. I think Riot gave me a fucking virus. Holy shit. The webpage to the, like, online patch notes is, like, all white. And it fucked up my screen. <laughs> anyway. So, it's good to see Aurelion's getting a cooldown change to his ult. Significantly, actually. That's, like, 10 seconds off. That's pretty good. Um, I don't think he's too bad, though. Like... If he really wants to, he could just fucking go airy. Or we'll see the buff to phase rush. So I'll keep my opinions to myself for now. Anyway, Bard. With the new runes, I think Bard is also in a weird spot. I'm pretty sure you go airy on him. You have to be an idiot to take the shielding one. Like, that's just bad because Bard doesn't build... Or at least he shouldn't build that much, like, health tank. He should be full AP, as they all should. But anyway, what are they doing? Base health regen and meep damage increased. Okay, so not only do they want him to be tankier so you get the shield, they want him to do more damage base so you don't have to build AP. So they're transitioning him into more of a support rather than a mid lane kind of burst mage. But not really. So Bard's getting a straight buff. That's pretty good. I don't think he's that good this patch though. I mean, this preseason, excuse me. I don't think he's that good. You have to be a really good player anyway to play Bard. The only person who realistically plays Bard at a fucking decent level is Aphromu. Or any goddamn Bard main you've seen that like has over 3,000 games on him. But anyway, let's keep digressing. Camille! I feel like she's been doing pretty good because every Camille I've seen has raped me. Uh, what are they doing? Fervor of Battle has been providing Camille with a good deal of sustained damage. That was true. Without that, she loses more trades. Oh, so she's been worse. We're giving up more room to use Q2 effectively and potentially while well protected by her passive shield. So they're increasing the shield duration on her passive. Okay. And window to recast Q is 3.5 seconds. Delayed for empowered attack. Wait, what? Wait, that's... That's so stupid. Oh, wait, no, 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 it's not. I'm an idiot. So... You get an extra 0.5 seconds to recast the Q after you wait 1.5 seconds. So basically, just get more time to cast. All right, that's 
That's what I thought originally. I was like, wait. Okay, I was just confused. So anyway, that's a straight buff. It's kind of a PP buff though. Like they're not changing any numbers on her besides just like how long her abilities last. The only thing that really puts an impact into her is the shield. The Q, I mean, the only way you're gonna get use out of this Q buff is if you're a fucking bronze trash and you don't know like, it's more than three seconds and you need to press it. Like, you you should. Pr if you're a Camille player and you've played her for more than one game, you'll know when to press the Q. It's not that hard to memorize it. So, the Q buff is whatever, but the passive buff is pretty good because usually you'll end up losing your shield before it, the enemy chunks you out of it. So that's pretty good, I guess. It helps her tankiness. But I, I don't know. I guess she still needs more though because they haven't changed anything. Okay, so Darius. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Okay, from what I've seen, I know there's a bad rep around Darius, because I come from the land of Season 4, which is Darius never lost. If you were playing Darius and you lost, you deserved to get fucking booted out of the game. You were a retard if you lost on Darius, or you were new. So, what did they do? Darius lost both attack damage from both runes and fervor. Yes, he did. He got a base damage buff. It wasn't enough. His passive skills were bonus, not total. Okay, so they increased his shit, wow. 10 to 27, 13 to 30, that's really good. Because it's stacking too, so. You're getting, level one, you're getting how much of an increase? It stacks up to six, right? So three times six, six, seven, that's 18 extra fucking damage per tick. That's crazy, dude, holy shit. Bleed damage at, oh no, it's five, so. Six to, fuck. Five to, so it's 15, that's still a lot. 50 bleed damage of five stacks 65 god damn all right noxium my ad 30 it scales now oh wait no wait what 30 35 foot oh, oh it's they have each per level scaling now okay so did it go up or did it go down oh no one up by five okay no actually like one up by a lot holy shit that's a really good buffer days i think I'm pretty sure Darius has to take Phase Rush to be relevant. There's no other rune that would be like good on him, I feel. Maybe Grasp, but I mean, you're Darius. You don't want to be that tanky. You want to do damage and be able to kill who you're on. So I think Phase Rush is actually the go-to for him. I haven't played him. Every time I've seen him played, he sucked ass. So this buff is well warranted, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, good job, right? You brought Darius back. Just let's not hope it's Season 4 again. Evelyn! W's magic resist shred now. Okay, wait, wait. As a preface to this, I think Evelyn is fucking ridiculous. I don't know if it's the spooky stacks nonsense that they did, but I was playing Nasus. I think it was yesterday too. I was playing Nasus. I got fed of, out of my fucking mind, right? I was camped by my jungler for once. I got so fed, I was like 1v3 and 1v4ing. But eventually I had to, I had to group late. I had to group up. And... They had a tank Ezreal, right? The tank Ezreal was like poking me, I wasn't feeling anything. Their mid laner was trying to rape me, I felt nothing. Their fed AD couldn't hurt me. Evelyn chunked me for one fourth of my health late game when I had two or three MR items. What? What is going on? I mean, she has a WMR shred, but like, Jesus. She's the one who does the most damage to me out of everyone. And I was racing a Vagar that game. Anyway, so this does more damage than you think. Evelyn's recommended items have been updated. Thank the Lord. Um, when can I, okay, so it's just bug fixes. We don't need to talk about Evelyn. Evelyn sucks dick. Fuck Evelyn. All right, Ezreal. Straight fucking nerf. Fuck Ezreal. I hate Ezreal. They, made, they basically told players, hey, guys, you want Ezreal to be viable late? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, please rework him. Change the W. And the rat's like, oh, okay, how about we give him just, you know, an OP summoner that only helps him early? And everyone's like, I mean, I guess it's good. And now look what happened. 1.1 total AD damage. Are you kidding me? As you were struggling in the bot lane landscape, flash forward seven patches and with how strong Klepto is. Klepto, not him. He no longer needs that additional baseline power. He's not, I mean, don't get me wrong, Ezreal's an okay AD late, like, he's a poke AD, but in the team fight, 
he loses out to most every other AD because he just has poke. That's it. He doesn't have like a strong engage. Like strong, I mean not strong engage. Like he doesn't engage, but he doesn't have like strong team fight presence. Besides poking, and, and don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean he does zero damage. He does good damage, but when you compare it to other ADs, it's not enough. And they're just nerfing him to make sure you know he's an early and mid game tier champion. I'm surprised they didn't nerf Klepto though, but they might have. I haven't gone to the rune yet, so we'll see. But will this make Ezreal any more worse early and mid? No, not really. I think he's still alright. Late, yeah. But Ezreal's not known for his late. Alright, Galio. W now deals damage to chip. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Okay, wait, wait. We want to tie strength to slightly risk your actions like diving out Justice Punch and landing a good shield of Durant Taunt. Essentially, as a beefy champion, also has the potential to dish it. Okay. They're adding damage onto his taunt. That's crazy. I've never seen them do that. With Ramus, with Shen, with anyone, no one's had damage on their taunt. That's crazy. What the fuck? I mean, the scaling and base damage isn't that bad, but... Oh, wait, no, it is. If you charge it up all the way, holy shit, that's a lot. Full AP Galio might be seeing some play again. And then the cool... Yeah, I think Galio's also in a bad spot. He probably uses Airy or Comet. Most likely Airy, because the people who use Comet are the ones who have CC in their, like, kits to proc it. So, Galio can proc it from his... Now his W, obviously, so he might take it. His E, because it would CC them up, and then the comment would definitely hit, but the Q wouldn't, and the Q is your main poke. But now, you have, like, your W doing damage, so that's going to proc comment too. Because ideally, you take Aerie when you don't have CC to land comment, because Comet's fucking horrid to land. But, well, I think he's going to be pretty good now. That's crazy. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, that's his passive. Who the fuck cares about that? That's fine. Damn, Galio got a pretty, pretty good buff. That's crazy. Okay, Ivern. So, Ivern is an, another one of the junglers who doesn't know what Keystone to take. And I don't blame them because Ivern is so different from any other fucking champion, like, Riot has made. What? You have to create items specifically for him, essentially. But, moving on. Uh, I'm pretty sure all they did was... Yeah, just one buff. So, they made it cost less health because there's not really anything that helps him out, so... You can be more healthy and get more ganks off and hopefully not feed your teammates laner. So that's good. Jarvan, passive and Q damage decreased. Okay, I don't know why they're doing this. For the longest time, they haven't touched Jarvan. I don't feel like... I mean, Electrocute, obviously, as they said here, it's like a high problem. But at that point, nerf Pantheon too, because... Like, Electrocute is meant to be good early game. So just make it good early game. I mean, Jarvan could transition to late... But if he's not building tank late and electric cube becomes useless late it's like why nerf hit the little damage he does have i mean it's not that big though like what is it 20 damage off the q late that's not that bad and eight percent i'm more sad for the passive they should just nerf the q and not the passive because if they're trying to take down his high burst that means that this passive change is just nerfing his like jungle clear more than anything I mean, everything's their fingers jungle clear, obviously, but I don't know. I don't like it. I don't think it's warranted. I know what's right, what Riot's doing. So anyway, Karthus. Okay. Karthus, I think, is one of the prime examples of a champion who goes, who goes airy. Because his only slow CC is his wall. And it's a fucking wall that's up every, what, 20 seconds and that you don't use that often? So it's like, you get Aerie on him because it's just more reliable, and you'll end out doing more damage than people with Comet because the Comet just won't land. But anyway, losing Deathfire touches hurt Karthus. Yes, it has. And he doesn't have a solid replacement as such. He needs a little bit more oomph. So they're increasing the ratio on his R. <laughs> I mean, you kind of use the R when the team fight's over. But, um... Hey, who the fuck am I to complain, right? I mean, it's a Karthus buff. No one plays Karthus besides me occasionally. So, cool. More Pentas. Leona, W damage increase. Straight buff. Um, 
Wait, what? Oh, decreased. I thought it said increased. Leona's always dealt a lot of magic damage. That's true. She's one of the fucking best early game supports. Plus, after the... <laughs> I love how Riot describes it. Plus the new Aftershock rune, it's too much. <laughs> it's just too much. They know. So, how much did they lower? 20? Alright, that's actually a big chunk early. 20 damage early is a lot, as evidenced by Darius's, you know, passive, which gave him plus 15 per tick. So, she'll do a little bit less damage, but that's to round her out, because Aftershock does do a lot. So I think that's actually warranted because Leona's insane. When I when a Leona goes in on me, I feel like she's gonna solo me and the, the AD could just sit and farm the whole lane. Like that's how bad it gets. Malzahar, our damage decreased. That's crazy, wow. So it was a 1.1 scaling, now it's a 0.8. I'm kind of sad about that. Malzahar should need to press more buns to kill people. He does need to. I played Malzahar this preseason and I was decently fed. And I went to the AD and I just pressed star by accident and I lowered them to like half. So I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, yeah, I don't know what they're talking about here. I don't think, maybe make it a one ratio, not a 0.8. That's a big ass nerf. I want Malzar to be fun, not fucking stupid, like useless. All right, Maokai Q damage decreased. Maokai is also insane because he is a Laz says he, he has high base damage. I wouldn't know I'm an AD main, but Aftershock is used on him, so that makes him OP. Anyway, straight nerf. How much? 5 five AP. And then late game 25, but again, it's late game, and at that point he becomes a tank. And if his base damage is the problem, maybe nerf 10, not 5. Riot's magic number is always fucking 5, and I don't get it. Anyway, more. Base mana regen increased, mana regen growth decreased, passive no longer procs on small units, but heals more off everything else? Wait, what? W cooldown reduced with one passive procs? Press W on a wave, get health back. Keep laning. And they want to make her, like, more, I guess, interactive. Okay, so her mana... She's gonna have more mana later in the game. But less mana regen early, so you can't really spam W, I guess. No, lo no longer grant spell vamp. We're gonna... <laughs> Definitely not spell vamp. They're gonna just take out spell vamp from the game. I'm kind of sad about that. That's the path they're going down now Anyway um, Morgana heals for 40% of the damage her abilities deal to champions large minions and large monsters. That's actually crazy because It's better than the passive, but you're not healing off me So it kind of hurts your leaning I guess But I think this is a good change because overall it's more healing when you need it. I I get. I don't know. I don't. F I don't fucking play more. All right. So W Tormented Soil's cooldown is now reduced by five percent whenever passive Soul Siphon triggers. That's crazy. You can actually keep healing in the fucking fights. Soul Siphon. Yeah. So wait. Would the W even? I think the W procs itself too. That's kind of crazy. Anyway, Orn. I think Orn is also another fucking crazy one because with the grasp change and the health you get, Orn is fucking ridiculous. With Sunfire cape buffs on the way, Orn bello Orn's bellows are going to be a bit too stoked. Ew. Especially since he's already on the strong side. Yeah, he's really strong. He's tanky as fucking does damage. Because of Aftershock. So, percent health damage down. Okay, that's fair, I guess. 10, to uh, Okay, so they're doing it by 2%, right? Yeah, 2%. That's not that bad. And the cooldown has gone up by one second. That's also not that bad. Yeah, this is a good thing to put him in line. I don't think this nerfs him outright. He's still going to do a lot of damage. Just a little bit less to, like, tanky people and a little less often. That's fine. Good change, I guess. Oh, boy. Without fervor, Riven is missing out on a decent amount of her sustained damage. Oh, my God, right? What are you doing? Riven doesn't fucking need fervor. All she needs is T-Lords, and then she wins. I mean, I get fervor because I'm a Riven noob, and I like fervor in the old, like, league. But now all she's going to get is Electric and just kill you level, like, 1 or whatever. So, they're increasing the damage. That's scary. Riven, they need to be really careful with buffs to characters like Riven. Because she gets out of control really fast and then no one can stop her. Unless it's different in this preseason. I actually haven't seen one Riven this preseason. Which is pretty crazy. But, I don't know if... I mean, I guess it's warranted just to give her a little bit of damage. Did they increase the base? They increased the base and the scaling. What the hell? 
Alright, we'll see how that goes. I'm a little worried for that one. Shen, Q damage bonus decreased. Uh, with about how much health people are getting, it kind of makes sense. Base bonus, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't hit the percent health, because it does percent health if the sword passes through them, I think. But taking off ba base damage is fine. His early is pretty good. Again, Aftershock. Everyone who uses Aftershock, I'm assuming, is going to get nerfed. Unless they're jungler, because junglers are kind of in a weird place. Okay, Sona. Q cost increased more fucking Sona nerfs. Are you kidding me? Q's aura's flat... Q aura's flat damage bonus decreased ratio increased. So they want you to build AP on her, I guess. And they don't want you to spam early because you already have mana problems early. Let's fucking ramp those up. Like, your ass. That's cool. What else? Um... I mean, I don't think that's warranted. I think Sona's been through enough. The, the other things they did were enough to put her in line. This is just beating her into, like, a grave. I feel like if Riot makes a fucking ultimate skin for them, they have to at least balance those champions to make them, like, alright. Like, I don't think Sona's that good anymore. She was really good because of, like, broken Aerie and her broken damage. So they reduced the damage, they reduced her healing, they reduced Aerie, and now they're reducing her damage again. Like, why? You give, like, your champions a cookie, Riot, and then you take the cookie and their entire house is, like, payment. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, Targ. Base armor decreased. Aftershock. I don't give a fuck. Zin Zhao. Base health decreased. W second hit ratio decreased. So, I know Zin Zhao is very strong this patch. Do I know why? No. Every Zin Zhao I've had on my team has been garbage. But... <laughs> Oh, I know. Press the attack. Actually, yeah, it makes sense. Because his Q would proc it. But they're nerfing press the attack, so... They have to be careful how they nerf him. But anyway, base health down by 30. Alright, that's not that bad. And W line damage ratio down by 0.10. That's not that bad. So they're just ramping in his damage. He was one of the top junglers. I know that. So that's alright. Yorick. Okay. I don't agree with this change at all. Here's why. So, Yorick is a very niche champion after his rework before his rework he had no natural counters no one countered yorick they just didn't right after his rework he is a split pushing kind of weak team fighting if he's even doing that champion who has a really good early game er, early to mid game because late game you need your maiden with you in the fights and your maiden can only focus one person your wall is destructible, and since Orange played most of the games, he's going to take it out instantly, and maybe even stun your team on it. So, you need your Maiden to do decent in the team fights, and usually you just want to send your Maiden to split push, or you'll split push with the Maiden, but at that point your team either loses, or if your team wins, you're winning the game anyway. But The, the main issue Riot had with Yorick, and what I was seeing with Yorick on Twitch, was... Um, he was destroying towers early. Like, I, I forgot the change they made. But I think what it was, was like, his Q, when you used it, it the damage now went towards the tower. I don't know if it always did that, because I haven't played War uh, Yorick too much. But the Q affected the tower. Add that on top of the Sheen's damage, which did like the Q damage plus Sheen, which was Roids on the tower. And then add that on top of the rune that... um makes you like charge up the thing on the tower and then you hit it and it does like 600 fucking damage you're like a rift herald every auto you did with the proc was like a rift herald fucking like slam it was nuts so they had a problem with him i guess going too far early and they're nerfing his base damage but we'll see if that does anything i don't know i think yorick is still in a weak spot because he doesn't really win the lane unless the enemy laner is bad enough for him to win usually you don't win against yorick I mean, you don't lose against Yorick, you just get out-pushed. Because you have to go back. It's not like you lose, he just pokes you out. You have to go back because of the ghoulies, and the ghoulies help him take the tower with the rape I just described. So, I don't know. I don't think they should nerf him, because he's bad late. Like, if they have a good early, let them have a good early. Don't nerf him late. Zoe! Alright, so Zoe has had a lot of hate in the community. Where everyone's saying, oh my god, how is she allowed? Raya, what are you doing? This champion's broken. Now, I've seen good Zoes, and I've seen a lot of bad Zoes. 
I have not played Zoe. I've heard she was fun, but hard. So here's my opinion on her after she's been out for a little bit. Her main damaging ability is her Q. She does not have a damaging ult like Talia. She does not have a damaging like W unless you use a sum, but the damage is wiener anyway. Because it doesn't even target champions unless they're near you. And I think the E, which is the bubble... Let me check. Yeah, the E, which is the bubble, is really hard to hit. And it increases... Everything's just based around the damage of the Q. So it's natural her Q should be doing a lot of damage. Like, yeah, it may seem unfair at times, but... I mean, remember old Vagar? I mean, it's not around anymore, obviously, but like... Not everything's gonna be that balanced. And there's ways to, like, outplay Zoe. I know that. Because, you know, I've raped them. Anyway. Alright, Q down. Now begins after Q cast completes now. Okay, so there, that's a nerf to the cooldown. Bug fix. Fix the bug. Okay, bug fix. Bug fix. Bug fix. There's your spell pickups. Wow, that's actually a big nerf. Because usually what would happen is you'd see, like, a spell uh, get dropped bot. So you would just roam bot and then <laughs> pick up the spell and then go back mid. But while you're roaming bot, might as well, like, get the kill, right? So it actually incentivized roaming, which was good. But, I mean, I, I don't know. It is kind of OP, this shit she can pick up. Like, she could pick up teleport. You can pick up a fucking, like... I don't know. Some of the things you pick up are crazy. Yomu's active and shit. I don't know. That... It, it, it seems like a weird nerf. But it's, it's understandable, because then she's not going to be able to, like, get that much worth out of roaming if she doesn't get anything. Because if you think about it, she'd go bot, get a free ignite, ignite you for free, get the damage from the W. And that's just because she went bot, not even because she, like, did anything bot. She just walked there and walked back. Okay, and then E, refund on champion hit. That's really big. Because if you just hit a minion or whatever and it slept, then it'd be refunded. That's stupid. Drowsy duration, 2.2. That's weird. Uh, Drowsy is progressively growing, slow reduced by 20. Okay. Um... Max travel distance is nerfed. That was actually a big thing, because after it went out the wall, it went pretty far. I even have to like admit that. That was crazy, what it was doing. Uh, trap radius, 250. That's actually... Oh, no. It was 290, it's 250. Okay. Mikhail's Crucible will not properly remove sleep. So, what Mikhail's used to do was it would remove the slow, and then after like a second of you not being so, you just fucking drop, like sleeping, which is pretty funny. So anyway, um, I don't know. I think these nerfs put her in line. I don't think her damage needs to be touched. Don't like that's just gonna make her unplayable. Cause she relies so hard on her Q, which is already hard to land if you don't get set up from the E or a CC. It's like when you have a champion that's relying on one ability for their damage, you can't nerf that too much, too much. So Zoe, I think she's pretty good. She's very high skill cap. Zyra, base mana regen, increased mana regen growth, decreased W charge time reduced whenever Zyra kills an enemy. W no longer increases plant health. What? So mana regen up, mana regen growth stat lowered. Okay, so she's regening more earlier. Okay. The passive has a shorter range. Lasts 8 seconds at all levels. That's actually a buff. Wow. Um, lasts 30 seconds. And W seeds last twice as long. Okay. Um, based on the, okay, so it's eight. That's pretty good. And then the gold gives us less. Plants now die instantly to melee basic attacks, but can survive more hits from damage over time effects, like small minions and monsters. They lost their bell in the late game against all other sources, since strength kept W no increases their health. A side note: there are a few more plant plants overall. Okay. Wow. Okay, so no longer grants health. When Zyra kills an enemy, Rampant Growth Recharge Time is reduced by 2100% for champion takedowns. So she has a reset now. And in range plan second, 50% current and max out. That's crazy. So they're shifting Zyra's strengths, I guess, to... They're just changing around some numbers. This is weird. I mean, Zyra always felt kind of bad to lane against. But I don't get what the thing is. Maybe worse late or better? I don't know. This is weird. I don't know even what to say about this. I haven't seen too much of Zyra anyway. <laughs> Feed me see more. Oh, that story had a fucked up ending. Anyway. Bramble Vest. 
Uh, that is gonna make Bramblefest better late, kind of bad early. Flick damage now has a lower base damage, but scales with armor. So yeah, it's gonna be a scaling item now. Yeah, so laning phase, it's weaker. Late game, it's stronger. If you have just Bramble. Uh, or damage increased. So, this is just a straight buff. Instead of... Wait, it still does bonus damage to minions? That's crazy. Wow, so it just does more damage in general. Gee, Jesus Christ. It might actually be worth it to like pick up, because now it'll do a lot more to champions. I always had an issue. I was like, why would I get this one? I need to be on top of the enemy champion. If they're like melee, I'll get it. But if they're ranged, why? But now it does like a decent amount. So that's pretty good. All right, runes this is our first way about. Okay, let's look at the runes, right? Lethal tempo. God, how long have I been going? 30 fucking minutes. This might be an hour long one. Ugh. All right, lethal tempo. So, exposure is now added to targets after damage from the attack that applies it. Oh, wait, what? That's kind of weird. I guess it's just a... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so lethal tempo. 10 seconds to 6 seconds. I think lethal tempo is pretty bad. Double lift uses it, but double lift is fucking stupid, so fuck double lift. QD says it's a noob trap, and I agree. Because the f okay, they would make it worth if, like, immediately after you hit, like, a champion, they, they need to make it, like, press the attack or something, right? Where, let's say, uh, yeah, I have the perfect change, right? So, right now, you need to wait 1.5 seconds. Now, in the early game, that doesn't mean that much, because 1.5 seconds, how many autos you, are you going to get out? It's not even that good early. But late game is where the issue is for me with press the attack, right? I mean, lethal tempo. So when I'm playing Twitch, I'm ulting in the team fight, right? I, I auto. It feels like 1.5 doesn't seem like that much time, but it, it is a lot of time you have to wait to get the buff. So I come out of stealth as Twitch. I ult, I start firing. The lethal tempo is getting ready. In 1.5 seconds, I could be fucking dead because the team is just going to focus me. Now, in that 1.5 seconds, I probably have a lot of autos going off, enough to already proc, press the attack, but not lethal tempo. So, here's what I'm suggesting. Make it like lethal tempo, to where, I mean, make it like press the attack, where you need a certain number of autos to trigger it. So, let's say early game you want to trade, right? Early game you trade one auto. Lethal tempo procs, in this, like, rendition of the patch, and you lose it for like what is now six seconds that kind of alleviates the pain of it because you need to wait a long time before you use it again but you lose it for six seconds or er, four seconds uh, i forgot after if it starts after it ends but anyway but you lose it for like a little bit of time just for trading one auto so let's say the enemy takes advantage of that because they're running press the attack like a smart person and they just rape you at that point because you lose your power spike they have theirs Late game is where the issue arises, because like I said, late game your attack speed is really high to the point where you can get more than like three autos off in 1.5 seconds. So let's just say it took three autos to proc uh, lethal tempo. At that point, you'd know when you want it, because if you're attacking enemy for three times, you're probably brawling them or fighting them. You're not, you're not poking at that point. And at that point, it's like instant. So early game, it's kind of the same thing where you're waiting 1.5 seconds, maybe a little bit more because you don't attack that fast, but late game, it's better. And late game is where lethal needs to shine. And I'm saying for ADs because I'm an AD main. I don't know about like other characters, how well it is, but for ADs, the shit's trash unless you're playing very specific things and you know how to position, which 90% of the league community does not. So I think that's the buff it needs. I, when it takes 1.5 seconds to charge up, I still think it's trash. Make it one second or 0.5, make it something. 0.5 would be ideal if they still wanna like keep the charge up. But they they really need to like buff it. No one uses lethal tempo unless you're an idiot. Okay, fleet footwork. The rune I think only Jin and Draven should go if you're AD. So the he base heal is a little bit down early, a little bit up late. The heal ratio is now 30% AD. The AP is a little bit higher, and now if the attack activates, that activates fleet footwork is a crit. 
Fleet Footwork's healing is increased by 40% of your crit modifier. So, I'm not a mathematician. That's this guy's toast for you, who plays Hearthstone, so maybe you guys don't know him, but... I'm not a mathematician like him, but I know one thing. More numbers equal good. So the fact that they're just adding more fucking, like, scaling with AD and AP and crit, you're just gonna be healing more. On Jin, this is amazing, because your fourth shot always fucking crits. So it's like, I think this is going to be even better on Jinnah. I used it before if I want to be safe. If I didn't, I used Dark Harvest, but I really like the change to Fleet Footwork. I want to see more shit like this for Lethal Tempo. Like, they knew Fleet Footwork was ass, so look how many changes they did. Fucking change in damage, change in scaling for AD and AP, change in crit. Like, there's a change for a lot of shit with Fleet Footwork. Oh, Lethal Tempo is pretty bad. Let's change it. Six seconds. Oh, cool, thank you. Anyway, Domination, you're getting less eyeballs. I'm not gonna talk about the little ones, but I'll talk, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about the little ones. All right, let's see this one. So, Heroism. 40% uh, of healing, yeah, this overheal kind of sucks, so it needs to be buffed, that's good. Triumph is too good, it's getting nerfed, that's good, because when one rune is better than all the others, I like it for its simplicity, but I don't like it for its game health, because that makes the game just like, more cookie cutter like just do this and it's right which i didn't want with these new runes i was scared that like it wasn't gonna be like that but the more options you have that are good the better i was just scared because i was hoping i didn't take anything that was bad but that's another conversation anyway presence of mind seven seconds that's th this thing is really fucking bad actually do never take presence of mind that's just horrible <laughs> triumph and overheal is what you need okay combat Coup de Gras is 9%. That's not bad. 1%. I mean, maybe you'll use the other ones now. I don't think the other ones are that bad. I think the only, like, saving grace with Coup de Gras is that... You don't want to be doing more damage when you're low, because you're going to die anyway. And uh, remember, I'm talking about ADs here. So you're going to die anyway when you're low, so you don't want to do damage when you're low. You want to do damage when the enemy is low to kill them faster. And... Which Coup de Gras does... And it gives you AD, or AP if you so want it, in the team fight if you kill people for 10 seconds. That's why I like it above the rest. The rest don't give anything else for team fighting. Anyway, uh, so yeah, less eyeballs. Uh, okay, Hunter runes now show who you have and haven't killed. That's good. Okay. Now going down to sorcery. Here we go, Keystone. Melee phase rush users are almost universally outperforming their ranged compatriots. Of course they are. So now we're giving ranged users the slow resist as well. That's actually pretty good for Aurelion. Aurelion might be using this now. Because the slow is really huge on him. So just straight buff there. Celerity is getting nerfed because it's the cookie cutter one. Everyone's using it. So that's good. Resolve. Uh, 5 to 6. Not bad. Okay, Overgrowth. HP text that appears above means when you gain health from attacking them. Wait, what? Marks on the wall. I forgot what- Oh, wait, no, no, I remember what that does. I think that makes your health more when they die? I don't remember, actually. I don't- I don't remember. Anyway, revitalize. Now also boost shields and heals casts on the user. That's pretty good, actually. Anyway. Uh, kleptomancy. We're really happy with how kleptomancy landed. No, they're not. But we still think there's room for improvements on the internal item generator system that feeds our goals to reduce the gap between extreme cases. Be it the best in class champions using it or the champs who would fall behind and weren't able to recover. No longer increases a te- What? It increased attack range by 25? Loot table mecha me mechanism updated to decrease variance in loot over time. Okay, so that's good. Wow, that's actually crazy. It gave you an extra 25 range. That may not seem like a lot, but in early trades it, it is. Because Varus has like 575 or 600, I believe. I know he doesn't have 550. 550 is like the average AD range. And Varus kind of wins out in poking because let's say he fakes for an auto, right? Like he goes up, he's about to auto you, he stops, he runs away. You go to auto him, but since he's running away, you run away too. He has a little bit more range to auto you, and you can't do anything. It's really big. Sometimes, it's really big. That's crazy, though. But anyway, I think Klepto does need to be nerfed a tad bit with the items it gets, because 
It's an early game, just fucking put you ahead fest. I was gonna say like fuck fest, but that didn't make sense, so. The item things is actually what I want to see. The attack range, maybe they could have kept it, but I don't know. Runes interface upgrades and bug fixes, no one cares. Alternate map runes balanced. Oh yeah, ARAM, holy shit. Uh, okay, items and object pings, no one cares. Ability icon updates, cool. I, I always love the visuals, I'm a visual man. Health bar updates, finally. Spell shield, invulnerable, extra life available. Resurrecting, unkillable, unstoppable. And now all these other things are now at your disposal for your pretty eyes to look at. Thank you, Riot. In Clown Champion bios, they're putting tiny peepee -pee, like lures in that change the lures of some of your favorite champions like fucking Nautilus, who's just a monster now. He's just a sea monster. So that's cool. Parties, I don't care. Clubs, I don't care. Upcoming events, new snowdown. Okay, I guess I'll... Wow, that is really low quality. What the fuck? Okay, so I guess I'll give my review of the skins. Jinx skin, pretty good. Santa Draven, pretty bad. Snowfall Poppy, pretty alright. I just think the Santa Draven one's kind of ass, but that's just me. I really like the Jinx skin, though. She's really hot in it. And Poppy, too. I don't forget about you, Poppy. Anyway, I think all female champions are hot. So the emotes are pretty good. Go buy them with your money. More emotes! Yay! New missions! Play naughty or nice missions and earn event exclusive emotes, limited time Poro skins, and more. Returning game mode, Legend of the Poro King. I don't really like that. But new game mode, Snow Battle Air. So basically, it's all random earth, but you can use like only the snow champions. All snowdown and winter themed skins are free to play in this game mode. You can also equip poro icons to fight alongside the corresponding poro during snowdown. Now, I don't know if this is in Summoner's Rift. I hope it is. Because if it's in ARAM, that's going to be kind of a bummer. I'll still play it, but... And just a lot of bug fixes no one cares about. Store updates. Lancer Paragon and Lancer Rogue Blitzcrank. I think the best Blitzcrank skins are coming back into the shop. Those skins are fucking amazing. We added a checkbox bundle. Purchases to make it more clear that items are included in the bundle are not refundable. Okay. And the upcoming skin, Hextech Kog'Maw. I think Hextech Kog'Maw is alright. It's, it's nothing to write home about. I still want a legendary Kog'Maw skin because I'm the Kog'Maw main, but... It's a good skin. I, I would say get it. I have 12 fucking gemstones anyway, so I might get it. Because knowing Riot, they're not going to release a skin for him forever. But I guess that does it for the patch notes. So... In total, what happened with the ADs this patch? Did, anyone, did any AD get changed? I don't think so, because I would have made a fit about it. Oh yeah, besides Ezreal, but I don't care about Ezreal. Yeah, that's the only AD that got changed, so not bad. A lot of questionable things in this patch, though, I would say. So, yeah, I mean, it is still preseason, they're tweaking it. So, I'm going to give this patch a 7 Mark Merrill's out of 10. Not bad. Questionable changes, but not bad. And pretty cool skins, too, that I'm not going to play. And two events going down, A-Earth and Snowdown. That's that's really good. I always like when there's more things to do with Riot. So anyway, before I do go, though, I, I also want to explain. For anyone who made it to the end of this video, because realistically no one does, but if you made it to the end, you are a true fan. And I want to let you know, if you're watching this right when it comes out, because that's when this statement only has relevance, I probably won't be streaming or making some videos. Not like I'm making videos anyway, but... I probably won't be streaming for a little bit because I have to study for my fucking finals, which are coming up. And Destiny 2 Osiris just dropped, so... I'm gonna be no lifing on that. But anyway, 7 out of 10 Mark Merrill's, Destiny 2's out, I got finals, I'm busy, I won't be doing shit. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you quite a bit later. Bye-bye.